Hey guys, it's Aaron. So I want to take a look at an extension. It's actually an older extension, but a new version just came out that has some new functionality, and that is Fredo Portrait. Fredo Portrait's a cool extension. It does some stuff with 2D imagery and cameras, and uh, it's well worth checking out. Go, go hop over to Sketchucation plugin store and take a look. Uh, what I specifically want to look at is new functionality that was released. Well, it's new as of this recording. Uh, which is July 2019. So if you're in the future, hey, how's it going? Anyhow, what it will do is it will take a complex 3D model and convert it into 2D face me geometry. Really cool. So I want to just take a look at that functionality specifically in Fredo Portrait. All right, so I have here a model of kind of just a street and it's kind of a heavy model. It does lag a little bit with uh, orbiting, you can see there. Um, one of the pieces that causes a bunch of, of uh, lag in models like this are things like 3D model trees. So you can see this has a whole bunch of different pieces in here. If I click in here and see, we'll just select everything. And there we go, just that. Let's see how many pieces is that. So 94 components, let's pick one of those components. And that's 18 components and each component is made up of four entities. So this model did a good job of using components, but it's still a lot of extra geometry. So one of the things that Fredo Portrait's gonna allow me to do is select this tree, and then I'm gonna click on this button right here. And that's gonna pop up the Portrait Studio. I'm gonna click on this last tab, which is generate 2D component. So I have some options in here. Um, I can do a zoom extents, which is gonna change my view. I don't wanna do that. I wanna do that actually from the view that I'm gonna place it in. Generally speaking, this is something I would do once I have a scene set. So I know exactly where this is gonna be, where I'm gonna look at it from, and where I want to generate my 2D components from. Um, I am gonna use this, this box is checked on, which is only going to render the selection as a face me, not everything. I also have the option of switching between perspective and parallel and uh, including a background or not. So I don't want a background. I do want it in this current perspective. And I'm going to call this my new tree. All right, some of the other things I have in here are insertion point. The insertion point for this component is right in the middle of the bottom of the trunk. So I'm going to do the same thing. On my 2D drawing, I want it to be right in the middle at the bottom. Uh, and I do have always face camera turned on. And I'm gonna say I want this to be about 2,000 pixels. This can be a little bit of a, a guessing game. You might want to, if you're doing this, I found I had to play with this a little bit to find the right resolution for an image because it is gonna affect how your lines look in the face me versus uh, the rest of the model. So you may have to play with the image with just a little bit. Contouring mode, I do want it to outline and cut holes out. I have some other options out there. Give the full image, crop the image, silhouette, external only, so it won't cut the holes out. I actually want this to be cut out as possible. I just want the tree. The other option here is hide edges. That's going to actually go through in the external edges, actually set them to hidden. So all I should see is basically what I have right here, which is this tree. And then finally, do I want to place this after I create it? Yeah, go ahead and I'll throw it in the model so we can look at it. And with that, I'm going to hit Generate Component. And we're back. That actually only took a couple seconds. I cut out there thinking that was going to take a second to generate that, but it was actually uh, about two and a half seconds. So a lot quicker than I expected. I'm going to go ahead and place the component right here. And I can see right off the bat, it is a little, this is what I was saying, the guessing game with how big is this file going to be. Uh, it's a little small right now. So one of the things I want to do is scale it up. I'm tempted right now just to hit scale and just drag it bigger like this. The downside to doing this, of course, is I'm just scaling the component shell right now. I'm not actually rescaling geometry. So if I was to grab this component and re-import it to, say, replace a different tree, it would end up small again, so I'd have to rescale it another time. The proper way to do it is to select, double click, select all this geometry, hit scale, scale it up, and I can see I'm just scaling right next to this tree next to me. It's about that big. And then the other thing I wanna do is I do want to move it back 
So the middle of the trunk right here is at the origin. That's going to allow, again, placing it to go in the proper spot. All right, I'm going to click out to exit. And I'm actually going to scoot him over just a touch. I'm now going to replace this 3D image with the 2D one I just created. So I'm going to grab the 3D tree with all its polygons, come over to the Components Manager, the Components window over here, right-click on the new tree, my new tree that I just created, right-click and hit Replace Selected. That's going to throw out all that geometry that I had before. Well, not throw out. It's still a component, but it's not in the model anymore, and replace it with that 2D tree. Get rid of this one, too. So you can see when I'm done, you can't really tell the difference between the 3D trees and the 2D tree, except that this is a single surface, as opposed to these ones, which is, are a few hundred components each. So hopefully you like that idea. It's a great way, especially if you're doing something like this, especially if it's scene-based, to really simplify your model. Models can get bogged down with cool-looking geometry, so, I mean, it looks good, but it removes some of the performance. Sometimes that's okay because you're just going to export a render or something like that. But if you do have to work inside a model regularly or walk your clients through a model that you're working on, something like that, it's a bummer to have it, you know, stuttering because of the geometry. So this is a great way to minimize geometry but keep the exact look of your model. So check out Fredo Portrait over on Sketchucation Plugin Store. Uh, like I said, it does a whole lot of other stuff that we didn't touch on, but that Create 2D Face Me from 3D Geometry is worth a download alone. So hopefully you like that. If so, give us a like down below and subscribe. That way you'll be notified when new videos like this come out. Most importantly, though, please leave a comment. Let us know if there's another extension we should take a look at or if you have some ideas for a different video that would help you out. We like making these videos, but we like making them a lot more when they're doing something that you want to see. Thank you.